Have you ever taken a close look at a cactus with all those pointy spines? Or seen a Venus flytrap gobble up an insect? Or enjoyed the many beautiful colors of wildflowers like orchids? Believe it or not, all of these plants are related and each of their unique characteristics took millions of years to come about or evolve. Flowering plants evolve approximately 100 million years ago. Dave Horick is a curator at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden in New York City. It's home to more than 12,000 different species of flowering plants. Just a sample of the hundreds of thousands of flowering plant species around the world. But a good place to find out what exactly makes a plant a plant. They all have basically the same structure. They have roots, stems, leaves, and some form of flower. Now, what the plants need tend to be just the same kind of things we all need. They need water, light, air, and foods. So if all plants have the same basic structure and needs, why is it that there are so many different types of plants growing in so many different places? From a huge tree in a rainforest to a tiny moss in the Arctic? The answer is evolution, a natural process that has shaped all living things on Earth. Evolution can be thought of as a change of any kind. It is neither good nor bad. It is just change that takes place in plants, animals, all living organisms. Plants, like all living things, pass their features or characteristics onto their offspring from one generation to the next. Over time, small variations called mutations produce changes in these characteristics. Sometimes a plant that has a changed characteristic might have a better chance of surviving in its environment. For example, spines on a cactus or thorns on a rose bush help ward off some plant-eating predators. Plants with this adaptation have a better chance at surviving, and the feature gets passed down through generations and eventually becomes a characteristic of the species, changing it forever. Can you think of some other adaptations that function as plant defenses? How about poison ivy? Or the hard shell of a coconut that protects the seed inside? Or even pine tree pitch that provides defense against beetles? In nature, evolution means that there will be change that comes from mutation, from a variety of different uh, uh, circumstances that causes change. Plant adaptations also involve how plants get food or nutrients. Venus flytraps digest insects, an adaptation that helps these plants survive in places where it's hard to get certain nutrients from the soil. Victorian water lilies have broad leaves, an adaptation that enables these plants to spread out on the surface of the water and have access to more sunlight. Lilies that can absorb more sunlight are able to make more food, providing another advantage for survival. There are so many different ways in which plants have evolved and adapted. Some of them are things that we wouldn't necessarily see. They might be very minor things that have to do with fragrance or subtle changes in color. Plant adaptations can also provide variation in how plants reproduce. In most flowering plants, pollen produced by the male part of the flower, called the stamen, needs to come in contact with the female part of the flower, called the pistil. Often, birds and insects, like bees, help carry pollen from one part to the other. But in orchids, the most common plant family in the world, with more than 26,000 species, there can be found unique methods of dispersing pollen. Some orchids disperse their pollen slowly, others disperse it all at once. This particular orchid actually shoots the pollen when an insect gets close, as Mr. Horick demonstrates with his finger. The evolution of adaptations like the examples we've seen can be an extremely slow process, often taking millions of years. How do scientists know this? From the work of paleobotanists. Paleobotanists are scientists who study plant fossils. Though many ancient plant species are now extinct, there are some plants alive today that have direct ancestors that can be found in fossils, such as this sample called an equisetum. 
we can see the predecessors for certain kinds of trees or ferns, things that are very primitive, because there are really good fossils of these things. With a fossil trail, paleobotanists can study how much or how little plants have evolved over time, helping us better understand why plant life on Earth today is so diverse and beautiful.